Today's video will discuss how you can make tassels as ornaments for your jewelry. There are so many ways to do them. People have been using tassels forever in home decor, sometimes on a light fixture, you know, like or on a fan pool, like as a fan pool. And actually some of the tassels that we're going to show today could be used that way. For example, the one on this necklace. I suppose. You could put that for a fan pull. Why not? But we're using it as a piece of jewelry. And so we're going to show some ways that you can make tassels using an old thimble or perhaps even a spool and some bottle caps or even a tulip bead cap from bcboutiques.com or just a common bead cap. So many ways to do it. So much fun. And you can use up a lot of the beads that are rolling around on your table as well and clean house at the same time. So, step on over here and I'm going to show you what you need and give you some good ideas. So here we have some examples of tassels that you can see close up. Here's one made with an old spool that we have patinaed with gilder's paste. And it features some fiber. I kind of like to call it my jellyfish because kind of reminds me of a jellyfish with all this squiggly different fibers. It's furry fiber hanging down. I'll show you how to do this part. Also, um, of course I showed you the necklace. Maybe you can see it a little bit close up. This is an old thimble that I've wired together. And of course I did a little bit of the Gilder's paste on here to colorize it. This is the thimble I used and I drilled a hole in it. Now, to do, you're not going to be able to use a hole press, a hole punch to do this. I did use my drill press to make this hole. But I'm not going to show you that today because I have decided that um, beyond a Dremel, we're going to leave power tools to the experts. So, I did use a drill press though. And if you come and join the Beast of Boutiques Creative Group, we talk about drill presses a lot. And I can give you a link to buy a good one that doesn't cost a lot and works real good. Anyway, but here's a good one that you can do with a thimble, okay? Here's one that you can do with fiber and one of the old Rosox tulip bead caps. We have them in virtually every plating finish you can imagine at bcboutiques.com. But I like to add some fiber. It just adds dimension. So we have some semi-precious stone beads in here along with some check glass and some old bead chain and whatever. But so what we need to do next is we need to demonstrate to you how you can make your own, okay? So let's do that. Let me set these aside. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do So let's say you want to do the one with the thimble. First you've got to find yourself an old thimble and get a hole in it, right? Then what you need to do is you need to get a piece of wire about this long. I'm going to say this must be about four or five inches long. And this is 18 gauge wire. And I only use 18 gauge for this lead wire that goes through here because it's a support. The rest of the time I'm using 20 gauge and most of the wire I'm using is copper wire in this video. You need a round nose pliers, you need a flat nose pliers, and you need a good flush cutter. This is the Zeron flush cutter. It's a low-end tool. Some people spend a lot of money on flush cutters and that's not a terrible idea because you use them a lot and you want them to last, but if you can't spend a lot of money on a flush cutter, this is a good one. It costs around $18 and it will last you a long time. It's the one I use in my workshop. So, anyway, so let me set these aside. That's all you need is those three tools. Okay, I'm going to start with this piece of 18 gauge wire and I am going to loop the end. So, I'm going to start about here. And we have Javi with us in the workshop today. And in a little bit, she's going to show you how to make a tassel as well. So that's going to be real nice. So you loop it like that. And then, of course, we're going to do the basic wrap that I've showed in my other videos. And you can find a ton of videos on this. There's not one beading magazine out there that doesn't show you how to do this wrap. 
I like to hold it with my flat nose and of course now I'm going to have to nip my tail off so I'm going to hold it down here it may go off camera and I'm going to get rid of it with my flesh cutters because the reason for that is you don't want that little tail flying all over the room and maybe ending up in someone's eye so here we go I've got about that much on there so now what I want to do is I want to start attaching bits to this. Now I'm not going to put any fiber in this one. So basically all I need is some pieces of chain. I've got some lengths of chain. And I'm going to double some of them. And I like them to be um, very random. And if you want a shorter tassel, of course, then you're going to use shorter bits of chain and fiber. Okay? If you want a longer one, then you're going to use longer ones. I'm going to go opt for longer. I kind of like to opt for longer at the beginning because that way you can always change your mind and go shorter if you want. So what I'm going to do is I have a few in my hand. As you can see, I've doubled them. I'm going to take a jump. You know what? I'm going to go with this bigger jump ring, at least a 10 millimeter for up here. That way I can get a bunch of stuff on it. So I'm going to start working it through. Okay, so I've got it this way. And maybe I'll add a piece of this raw brass chain here. Just some texture. Just use up different snips and bits of uh, chain that you have. I think, no, I'm going to leave this long. Um, maybe I will take a little bit of this stuff and put it on there too. See if I can fit it on. Yeah, okay. So I've got a lot of texture going on. I have a lot of length. Some of this I'll cut off. All very random. I like it to be kind of loosey-goosey. Okay, so now for now, I'm going to close this. And it seems like this is a little bit too thick for my jumpy tool, but I just about got it. So, okay, I closed it for now. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to even up some of my lengths because I don't want this hanging way down here. So, I think I'll cut this one, and I'm going to leave. I'm going to cut it at my larger loop. You know, get the little loop off. Uh, too much coffee today. Okay, get rid you know, I'm just going to trim them up kind of randomly. And you know, once I get off camera, I will do more work to this. So if it's not perfect when I'm done, so what? You know, I, I can work on it later. I have to get it done for you today. We can't be here all day and all night, can we? No, because you want to go make some. I think I'm starting to need another cutters. <laughs> These are getting a little dull. I use them so much. But they last. They hold up pretty good. Is there another one over there? Yeah, there is, Hubby. I did get a new one out today. Yeah. Yeah, let me just take this out today. I'm going to use hers. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Yeah, I knew I opened a new one today because I was thinking that one I had had it for quite a while and it was getting dull. Okay, so I'm just kind of trimming this up. Uh, just very random. I'm going to leave that one long. We'll see where it goes. Now all we're going to do is we're going to bead down the stream. Okay, so as you can see, I have some things laid out here to attach. And again, you just do it kind of like, you know, how you work a charm bracelet. You're very random. You kind of start here. You start there. So I'm just going to start putting stuff on and see if I can achieve some balance. And one of the main things that you want to remember is you want to get uh, things too similar right next to each other or things that will bounce off each other, you know, and like lump up and not look right. So just look for some balance and flow. And, you know, this is where you have fun with it. You just kind of play with it until it looks the way you think it should look because it's it's your deal right it's your creation and see I can even flip that over there if I want yeah okay I'll take and put another piece I'm just gonna put a few on here guys just so you can get the feel for it and then we can go ahead and finish this one off so I can show you the next one when you let go of it like that, sometimes you do kind of lose your place, so you kind of have to flip things back and forth and reposition sometimes. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to put one more piece on, just to give you a feel for flow. 
I have these um, little turquoise, stabilized turquoise discs that I've wrapped and coiled. I got kind of a neat coil in that one. Usually I'm a wonky coiler, but I'm trying to be a little bit tighter. I don't know. I like organic looks, so I'm fine with wonky. At my age, wonky works. It works at any age. Okay, so anyway, you know, you keep working with it. You can put something on the end. I kind of like to put something like about here and then let some of the chain hang. And just leave it look kind of ragged, you know? All right, now what we have to do is we have to get this on here. So I'm going to open my jump ring again. And I'm going to put my guide wire thing through there. Get that on there. Okay. Yeah, this, I probably need to use two jump, two uh, pliers for this. It's because this jump ring is very thick and this slot is not quite deep enough. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to get a, gu a guide bead inside of here because I want this to hang down outside of my thimble. So I'm going to get a couple of beads and, you know, if you're, you think somebody's going to see them, then you care what color they are. No one's going to really see these, I don't think, so I don't really care what color they are. I'm just they're su su serving a purpose. So that's up in there, okay? So I've threaded my thimble on, okay? The next thing I want to do is I need to get mm, a little bit something else on there. I don't know, maybe I'll try this piece of coral. Ah, nope, needs a better hole. Sometimes these semi-precious... Um, beads are really wonky. Okay, now I need kind of a big bead to go with that. Let's see what I've got in here. Hmm. Put that maybe. And then maybe I'll take them just for a little bit of bling, put a rondelle, if it can fit over this wire. I don't know, because it's 18 gauge. Maybe not. Ah, let's just quit for here. Because basically what we're doing is showing you the principle. We're not showing you a perfectly finished beautiful item we're just showing you the principle you do what you want with it okay so now I've got my tassel and you could even wrap this in here you can even put a little piece of sari fiber right here and have that hanging out too that would be also very good now we're gonna have to make this tight this needs to be very tight so you gotta pull this up as tight as you can okay and then bend over loop up Pull it over, make sure it's good and tight. Because then if you don't, this is just gonna be all loose. And now we're gonna wrap. That could have actually been a little bit tighter even than it was. But because this is 18 gauge wire, when I wrap it here with my little wonky wrap that goes all around, it kind of helps to tighten it too. Okay? So I've got it about all the way around there. Now I'm gonna get rid of my end. And again, I want to take and push it down away from myself so that it doesn't fly up in my eye. And I've got a funky end, so I'll push that in with my flat. This is going to take a little playing with. I may come back to this later because I'm not crazy about how that's going, but it's a, it's okay. Another thing you do is you could keep rewrapping it with wire, or you could put a little piece of ribbon over it. You know, it's just very forgiving. I love our type of jewelry making today, and the organic altered stuff. It's very forgiving, and you can. There's a lot of things that you can do when something isn't quite right to make up for it. Okay, but that's kind of how it goes. All right, so I don't think I would leave this just you know in raw brass like that, I think I would like to add a little bit of patina. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my can of Gilder's Paste. And this is the patina color. And these are the iced enamels brushes that we carry at bsuperboutiques.com. They're part of the iced enamels line. I just love these. They come 10 in a package for like Two twenty-five or something and they just come in so handy and I love them for applying the Gilder's paste so now I could have done this before I used it too but I'm gonna just do it on here very dry just dry brush it on 
and then I'll set this aside and I'll let it kind of cure for a while and then I will take a clear sealant like Swellegant Clear Coat um, Jewelry Shield which you paint on the back of cuffs and rings to prevent allergic reactions is good you can use that as a sealant too did you know that guys I do it frequently um, there's a number of things you could diamond glaze would be another thing that you could do over top of it you do need to seal it now if you had done this prior to putting it on here you could have taken it and given it a hit of um, Krylon matte uh, acrylic spray varnish or any kind of you know matte acrylic varnish sealant is fine um, but because we've got all the beads on here now it's not too good but I think I might also put a little bit on here just to get it kind of cool I might put some here of course I'm gonna get it on my fingers now I might even go down my chain a little bit I think I might put some on this bead it just kind of brings it all together when you do this might put a little bit right down here I'm on that chain different places see then I'll have to go back over that and seal it with something I'm probably going to use um, jewelry shield because it's fast but that's the general principle this is by no means perfect I would not call this finished by any means but it's for the video just to get so you can get the idea how we do it okay let me set this one aside I'm, I think I'll just set it here so that you can keep looking at it maybe if Rob still has it on the camera put this aside but what we want to do is we kind of, kind of see how it would be to make one like this right so what do we have here well, we have a piece of the coral bead we have an old soda pop top we have an old wooden spool we have a flat bead we have some fiber we have a rose bead or a tulip bead let's go for it and see how fast we get and see if we can pull this together so what we need to do just stepping over here a little bit is as you see I have some fiber cut and I have some of this kind of stuff you can get this um, we have some fibers like this at my website or you might have some in your stash already but I'm just kind of lining them up next to each other see how I like this is kind of funky you might, if you're in a fiber store, you know, like a fabric store or something, you might find some cool fibers too. I like to bring them into the website when I can. So I always look at, um, the, it'd be the silk and velvet ribbon section. Sorry, silk ripped up in sections would be awesome. But I kind of have a bunch of stuff here, kind of in a bundle. Okay, so now I'm going to pull it up in the middle. And I am going to take this gypsy ribbon that we do sell at the site. We sell a lot of this stuff at the site. This gypsy ribbon it makes a really good cord for your necklaces. And I'm going to tie it. And don't worry if it's perfect in the middle. We just, you know, we don't worry about that. I'm going to tie it. So it's tied. I'll let that hang down. Okay? Alright, so now we need to be able to get this as well as chains I like to add chains on here so I'm going to try and go through that knot and I might have tied it a little tight so I think I'm going to tie it a little knot and that's just the thing about it if you get the first knot too tight and can't get your jump through it don't worry about it just make another one that's not as tight okay tight enough so it's not going to come out oops I think that went down the line there I don't want that okay so alright that's good enough alright so now I'm going to go through there with this okay so then I want to add some chain so I gotta figure out where's the middle of this thing about here about there okay let me add a piece I'm gonna cut that that's way too long I don't want to waste a piece of this brass ox rollo chain we have at the site we sell a lot of this because it makes a good chain for turn bracelets and I think I'm just going to hang this one as it is from this side. Hope you can see what I'm doing there. I'm trying to pause so you can see. Get a little bit of chain. And then here's a bit of fine chain. Now I don't know if this is going to go over because this is kind of a fat jump. So I don't know. We'll try. We'll see what happens. No. I'm going to put it with another piece. Alright. So for now I'm done. I'm going to close that. 
And I'm going to need another pair of pliers because this is too heavy of a jump for my... And I'm going to close. Okay. So there we go. All right. So now to, I still want this on here. So what do I do? Well, I have to get a smaller jump ring. Okay. Which I have right here. So I'm going to open that. And I'm going to go through one of these loops here and get it on kind of random. And then I'll just find a place and put it. I'll just place it. You know, just wherever. I'm going to put it right here, I think. Oops. Ah! Came right off. What happened? What happened? Oh, it came off my loop. Rob always says that. What happened? Right, Rob? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's so interested in this. Pretty soon, Javi will probably be making the videos. So Rob's going to go get his machinist job. Okay. So there you go. Kind of like that. So then again, we need to hang some stuff from it. So I'm just going to hang a few things to get the points. Before you put the top together or after, it doesn't matter. Just, just put stuff. Okay. Just put it. But you can see how it's going to look this way. I had made this stuff all up ahead of time. I put some of these little turquoise colored beads and leaf beads on um, some of this copper tab I had and just all kind of stuff. Anyway, you get the idea. You can see where we're going with that. We're just going to hang stuff all random through the chain. Okay, now we have to make the top and put this all together. So what I have is I have two soda pop lids, old ones, that I have drilled in the middle. Okay, so you're going to need a drill or a drill press for this. Alright? So, I want one on the bottom and one on the top, and now I'm going to need a piece of that real heavy wire, so I'm going to take a piece of this, that's beadsmith, smoky quartz, whatever, you know, copper, whatever you got. You know, I don't worry about if the metal's all perfect. Okay, I want about a length about that long. Four or five inches, maybe. Okay, I'll put that back. Alright, so now we have to loop at the bottom. So we want to get a nice loop. Because this is going to, we need to stabilize. Okay. And then again, we're going to wrap as nice and tight as we can. That's pretty good. Like that. And once again, you want to get rid of that tail away from yourself, cut away from yourself. Okay, very good. Want to be safe. All right. Straighten this out then if you can. What we're going to do is we're going to open this up again. See, you always want to get your jumps closed so flush that you have to kind of look to see where it was that you opened them. I always want to get them very flush. Okay. Now I'm going to thread this on. Now, I forgot something. I want to put the, the tulip bead cap, so I'm going to need something like this. Kind of, kind of a bead. A couple beads, maybe. Depends how much you want it hanging down. I have a little, these are spectra beads, and they're just like a really good all-purpose bead. I'm going to thread my cap on there, and now I'm going to go through. I'm going to turn this to hold it. That's a good thing to do, you know, just turn it to hold it. Okay, now I'm going to place. And like I say, when I'm done with this, I'm probably going to fiddle. But I'm just basically showing you the principle of how to get it put together. Because in the long run, it's all up to you. A lot of people like to make these with um, also the old Charlottes, the old Bisque Charlottes. And they'll put the doll head on, drill through, make it. And then have like the fiber hanging down in the beads is like it's her dress. I have some over in the old workshop, but I didn't put them here. Bring them here. Okay, so now I'm going to put one of my bead, my uh, pop caps on and my old spool and the other old spool like that. I could have, this one has, you can see has some beads under too. I could have done that too. If I wanted, but I didn't doesn't matter. I might take it apart and do it yet. 
All right, so I'll put one on top of here if I can get this through. Nope, that's the one that was, this one's big enough. Okay. So now I'm going to put that there. And now I need another good size B. Hello, oh, what shall I put? I'm going to put a bead cap. Maybe I'll put this patina bead if I can get it, if I can get it through. It's a long wire. There we go. Put that one. That's kind of cool. I patinaed this bead in one of the videos a long time ago with Swaliga. I think I used the Tiffany green. I love that. Okay, so now I have this one. Shaky hands and all. Too much coffee. Okay, now the point is again pull up tight. Pull up tight. Bend over. Tight. Very secure. Tight. And I want to see how to place my loop. I think I want it like this. I may fiddle with this again too. Bend it over. I want a pretty good size loop so I went over a little bit. Get my flat nose and wrap. And basically we have the tassel. You know it's pretty much done. The only thing you'd want to do, once again, cut away from yourself and then tamp that back in you have a little bit hanging out. That's why flat nose is so great. Okay, so once again I can do the Gilder's paste on here and um, to seal it, you know, um, the stuff I told you before, jewelry shield, this good, um, it's all again clear coat, diamond glaze is awesome, uh, maybe some other water-based kind of solutions would work good. Or if you had done it previous, you could have used any number of things. You could have even resined it. And But I think I'll put a little bit of this stuff on here. I got a little bit on the bead. It doesn't matter. I kind of like it on the bead. And then I think I'm going to get some on this. And add some patina in there. Take a little of that shine out. And maybe a little bit more in there, maybe a little bit up here. See? Makes it look very rustic, I think. But that's the basic concept, basic principle. So now you see basically how it's done. Now we're going to take a little second break and we're going to cut to Javi. And I am going to coach her as she makes a very simple tassel using the tulip bead. Hi, my name's Javi. Um, I made this tassel. And would you like to make one too? For this, you're going to need a round nose, flat nose, flat nose, and a cutter. Excellent. And then they'll be able to make this, won't they, Harvey? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what do they need to make this? What parts do they need to make it the way you did? Well, um, they're going to need chain. So I have an example over here. So I have two chains I'm going to add to this. And this is kind of like your guide wire that we made out of the heavy gauge copper wire. Can you show them how you made it? Um, sure. So you need the round nose. And how do you make that um, loop at the end? We're going to um, we have we cut a piece of a the coppered wire, mm -hmm. and we're going to um, bend it. Bend it, mm -hmm. and now we loop it over. I'll loop, loop it over. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. You pull it up this. Okay, if you want to do it that way, if that works, if that's <laughs> what works for you, that's fine. Because she makes really good loops. If that's what works for you. That's fine. Okay. And now we're gonna wrap it. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it around. Mm hmm. Excellent. That's great. And then we're going to cut. And how do we cut? What do we do? We cut away from ourselves? Yeah, cut away from Proceed. yourself. Proceed deep down. Right. Okay. And then we take our flush cutters in case we have a sharp edge. Oh, flush cutters. Mm hmm. I mean, no, flush cutters. I said, sorry, I threw you off. But flat nose, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Okay, okay. 
Okay, and that would be... We have that ready. That's how you do it. Okay. So show them how you put the wire on then, Javi. Show them how you put the wire. The chains? Mm-hmm. Look, yeah, I said the wrong. I just keep throwing you off. What kind of a teacher am I? <laughs> it's late afternoon. We're ready, we're ready to have dinner, huh? Okay, we have a jump ring, uh -huh. and we have our chain, and we're just going to um, connect it to the Excellent, chain. yes. And you would add it to the... Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and you can do them one at a time, or you can put them all on the same jump ring, however you want to uh -huh. do it. Okay? So that's how we would do it. So if you want to just go back to this one, why don't you show them how you thread the beads on and put the tulip bead on and finish it. Okay. Okay? So you have to put your little beads underneath your tulip cap. Okay. So we would put a, a big spectra bead under. Mm-hmm. Spectra you, beads, You yeah. could put in a couple mm -hmm. little ones. Mm-hmm. And put... Um, the rose bed. Excellent. That's just right. Because a little bit shows on at the bottom and then you have the rest of your dangles. Okay. So now you need to put the beads on the top and pull it up tight and finish it. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to put some cat beads. Mm-hmm. And put your lead. Mm-hmm. There. She chose a lampshade bead there that we have at the website. A little shiny bead to add a little bit of bling in there because Javi likes bling. <laughs> Super. That's a nice combination. Okay, now you have to pull it up tight. Show them how you do that. Um, you pull it up tight and you gotta get it right in here. Okay, pull it up. You got it tight. You got it good and tight. Okay, bend it right there because that keeps it tight. Okay. Okay, now loop it up. Super. Very good. Okay. And remove it. Now you use your flat nose. Flat nose. Uh huh. And wrap. Awesome. That's a very good tight one. And you don't have to go a whole bunch of times if you don't want it. That's actually sufficient right there. If you okay. want, you could cut it off right there if you want. Yeah, she bent it in a little bit. Okay, now remember, you put that down. Don't yeah. cut up close mm -hmm. to your face. Very good. So, whoops. There it goes. Wow, we just showed him what happens, right? Didn't we, Javi? Yes. We showed him what happens. Uh-huh. Okay, so I hold it up and I think you're... There you go. I like to that. Huh? Yeah. So you've got the start of another one now, huh? So that's how you do it. So don't think if you're a beginner that it's that hard because it's not. This is a beginner level type project. I always teach the easy stuff. I'm the kindergarten teacher of jewelry craft, but hey, you never forget your kindergarten teacher. Isn't that true? <laughs> I never forgot mine. Did you forget yours, Javi? No. <laughs> no. Okay, so next time we'll see what else we can come up with to share with you. And, and we invite Javi. Yay, she did great for her first video. And uh, you go try and make a tassel now and share them with us at the Bisu Boutique's Creative Group at Facebook.